ones. Greetings, dear ones. It is Friday, the 26th of March. Greetings, dear ones. It is Friday, the 26th of March here in New Jersey, across the river from Philadelphia on a most beautiful spring day. Actually, we are going up to, I understand, 77, so uh, a little bit of a peak at um, summer, in other words. So welcome, welcome from wherever you are joining us. And whenever you are joining us, excuse me, just want to bring in the flame of the energetics here today. Um, because whenever you are joining us, the energetics will still be exactly right for you and in just the right form and configuration for your highest and best. Um, today, this has been an interesting week, a lot going on, both energetically and earthwise. Those of you who are tuning in live, please put in the comments that you are here and anything that you've been um, observing or experiencing as far as um, earth energetics as far as cosmic energetics and what I mean by that is that um, something is repeating itself over and over again in your um, experience or in other words your divine self your wider self and your guides and teachers and masters are all attempting to gift you, to reach you and gift you and speak to you, uh, giving you um, hints or clues or um, little bites of information that can help you on your journey. Since we are in a collective consciousness, what you are experiencing and those energetics that are that are coming in apparently for you are also here for um, a wider uh, population even those that are not perhaps on a journey of awakening or spiritual um, expansion there is still what is going on within human nature that is being um, affected, adjusted, um, evolved. And that's what we are currently in this process of evolution. And I've referred to it on many occasions as a leap simply because it is a very large um, progression of evolution in a very short period of time. In other words, normally that which would take hundreds of years or even millennia is happening within a few generations. And you are the ones that are on the cutting edge. You are in the deciding um, point. And also within the design group. So in other words, you are here very, very, very much on purpose. You have a very unique role for, you are unique within this grand project. And what you came to experience as a soul also contributes to the greater process of evolution of the planet. And it's really, really vital that each of us feel that and experience that and know that because it's very, very difficult to see the other in that light of compassion and 
as a divine expression if we don't really know that and feel that for ourselves. And that is a process and it is a journey and it is a question of coming to know thyself so clearly, so deeply that you see all of you, all colors, um, those that are a pleasant to look at or to experience and those that may not be so pleasant on the surface. However, as you delve deeper, you come to have that divine piece of you or that jewel that lies within that apparently unpleasant part of you or experience. Today's um, Ancient Future Wisdom, episode 88, is entitled Life is Color because the universal energetic of color has been so very apparent. And yes, we have color all around us and yet there are certain times when universal energetics become let me say this, they step to the foreground for there is a very specific combination of frequencies or levels of multi existentiality. I use the term multi existentiality versus multi dimensional because um, there are, m m there is much more in this universe than the 12 spiritual dimensions. And those must be included because not everyone is on that path. Not everyone is on the, per the um, particular spiritual lineage path of exploring through the 12 spiritual dimensions. We have beings on this planet who are exploring through different worlds and different realms where um, there are a different set of parameters, be it physics, be it physicality, uh, time, and different abilities and knowledge therein. So someone I have, I have clients that have very, very deep connections because they are this in another existence to, for example, um, the magic realm. You all, those who were here last week, know that the land of Ireland was very apparent and again, one can say, oh, that's just because of St. Patrick's Day. But what's happening with that um, global recognition or um, acknowledgement of a country is that it is allowing for uh, the information that lies in that land and in that culture and in their history even prior to perhaps a human history. For there is much magic in Ireland and of course the English Isles, but they are all very different. Magic can take many, many, many forms. It has different flavors, so to speak. So even within the realms of magic, there is great variety and great differentiation. And that's another example of how wide the spectrum of color is on this planet. When we equate color with, for example, um, when we equate color with the multi-existences or many different types of beings that are here on the planet. 
and they may be presenting in human form. You are here in human form, and yet you have many aspects of you that is concurrently experiencing other realities. When and as you come to know yourself well, or the more you know yourself, let me put it that way, the more you are able to see, feel, hear, experience, know those other aspects of you, those other realities of you, and actually utilize them in your daily life. This is not just something that you envision or um, explore in, you know, a meditation group or a spiritual group. This is something to be actively tapping into, utilizing, recognizing, bringing in to the world today. One of the many aspects that we know of color here on this planet in our human experience is that, and there are many, many, many studies to confirm these aspects, that it can sway thinking and that color can actually change someone's actions. It can either irritate or soothe our eyes and our visual perception. It can even suppress appetite, raise blood pressure, and of course it is a very significant significant and key component of communication between and among humans. Something as simple as a street light known around the globe. Red means stop, green means go. Um, there are many colors that again are kind of globally recognized for uh, communication, danger, warning, etc. And those are the colors that are available to us within a very narrow bandwidth of what is the color spectrum. Most colors are um, inaccessible to the human eye. And all of those colors have frequency. So our energy fields other parts of us are able to perceive this, pick it up, respond to this, these frequencies, without our having to see it. Now, this col these colors, this universal archetype of color, actually, um, is part of other universal archetypes, part of the universal archetype of light, and part of the universal archetype of energy because it holds both. Light in our world to be able to see the colors and light is also although it, as I just mentioned a minute ago, does run into the non-visible, it is still very much a part of our experience here on this planet and beyond as, um, as frequency. So we have those as um, universal archetypes right now. And the universal archetype of color is juxtaposed with the black and white that 
is representing, as we talked about on the equinox, the polarity on this planet available and available for us to explore. Not only, of course, on this planet, but we're talking about those polarities that we're most familiar with be it dark and light, <clears throat> good and bad, heaven and earth, human and divine, male and female, we could go on. And it's very, very interesting that those, oh, hi, Teja, how good to see you. Please chime in and let me know if you, if any of this resonates with you or if you've been picking up other information throughout the past week or 10 days. You are such a a finely tuned being to energetics and the earth. So very, very welcome your comments. So we have this beautiful panoply of a wide spectrum of color and frequency available to us, not only on this planet, but within this universe, of course, represented by um, different existences, different realities, as well as the polarized experience of a dualistic universe that we have chosen to explore. And when we are out of touch with ourselves, when we actually do not know the truth of ourselves, when we are not able to feel and experience down to our essence that we are divine beings, we tend to view ourselves and the world very much in black and white. In that very narrow determinants of what is right and what is wrong, very narrow uh, framework of who is acceptable, who is not. Interestingly, this week um, I was talking to someone who um, her meditation group was exploring what is worship and all of the different aspects of religions throughout time and as we're moving into this very, very powerful um, season of traditional religious uh, observance, be it by the Christian, um, inst the institution of Christian Christianity or Judaism, both are very, very <clears throat> uh, close together this year. It is interesting to see those sometimes rigid or confining parameters that lead to a great deal of harm and um, separation between and among people. And the more we come to know our divinity and really feel the purposefulness and the uniqueness of our own, <clears throat> excuse me, to see the creator, creation, the divinity in and through everything, every animal, every tree, every brook, every person, then that sense of compassion and understanding is automatic. And we are able to see those that we differ from in perspective or um, viewpoint or practice or culture or race as or with compassion and with the awareness that they too are divine. They too are of the same source material that we individually, personally, and the planet are made of, actually the cosmos. 
We're all made of the same thing. Energy and divine creative energy. And so when we feel and are aware of this divinity within our black and whiteness, so to speak, expands and we go beyond, we are able to experience, feel, know beyond what's referred to as the veil. The veil is within us. And when that veil is lifted, it's as if a blind man seeing color. Uh, Emmett Fox speaks about this in his uh, little daily um, readings, 365, no, around the year with Emmett Fox. And he speaks of us living before this awareness of awakenness as if a blind man in a beautiful garden who also lacks the ability to smell and so when we awaken to that it is you know much like what the season we're going through right now everything is beginning to bud here on in, in um, on the east coast um, my magnolia tree is shedding its little fur coverings and the first little pops of pink and uh, beginnings of opening and it happens so quickly and so beautifully with the light of the sun. And to represent that black and white, which has been very interesting, skunk has been very present this week. Um, animal teachers will come to you in many different forms, whether it's live, actually, uh, <laughs> last night, I was able to smell the scent of skunk and it wasn't the strong spraying that it would do to defend itself, but more just like a warning shot. And I think it was frightened by the dogs barking or what have you. And they all know in my yard it is safe and that they are welcome and often have food to eat and some sort of shelter. So hopefully he was coming here and I felt very blessed. My cat was certainly on guard with the screen door open, but um, that was only one form. It had been appearing, uh, particularly in multiple ways on, uh, in the news or in, you know, on the computer and Facebook or social media. Animals will come in a wide variety of ways even though you're not able to see them in nature or experience them in nature yes shanti <laughs> eagles also have been actually very 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 uh present this week um both an article came across my desk of how eagles have been um uh, dying in several different instances around certain lakes and scientists just now this current month are able to isolate what has been killing not only the eagles but other animals in um, that have been eating or, or from that lake eating or drinking from those lakes and now that means we have a means of um, changing that and the other article that came across my desk regarding uh, Eagles Teja was uh, that there has been a huge increase in the Eagle population. And many, many people have been seeing them here in New Jersey like never before, over the suburbs, uh, you know, not, not out in wilderness areas. So yes, they've been very present. And um, so skunk is also representing a very keen sense of balance. And they do not do that heavy spraying that I mentioned a minute ago when, or they don't do it lightly. They do it when they are seriously in danger or under attack. What I smelled last night, as I said, was just kind of a warning, a heads up, don't you know, don't come any closer, don't hurt me. Um, they've always uh, represented walking your talk. Um, 
your reputation precedes you. And also that um, we, we need perhaps to raise a stink that uh, justice needs to prevail. And we're seeing huge attacks on voting rights and um, on certain cultures, the Asian culture, etc. So where you feel you need to, you can call in skunk to help you stand your ground calmly without having to attack. So um, they are not here just to give us messages, but to actually assist us in our walk, to be able to call on that energy, to be able to call them in as helpers and um, in a moment of need. Um, another thing that represented so brilliantly the uh, archetype of color was, um, and I will be posting it in, a, in the thumbnail for this talk uh, on YouTube and on my website, hopefully tomorrow, and that was a magnificent shot taken by a photographer who was actually celebrating his birthday. And it is a picture of the auroras, those magnificent colors that come um, when the electromagnetic energy is hitting our atmosphere. And it was the beautiful auroras over the Iceland volcano that erupted this past week and hasn't done so for 800 years. So that's quite a picture and quite a juxtaposition. And I would also invite in, um, you know, more when, when we talk about taking a stand for justice. If for me, it is always taking a stand for the rights of the earth, plants, trees, land, waters, animals, etc. And we're seeing massive flooding in Australia like never before. They're used to having the contrast of fires and floods. Um, every hundred years or so, they can see huge um, expressions of either. But the flood that is occurring right now is so wide and so massive that, again, they're citing the uniqueness of this event as having a connection to climate change. And, you know, of course, we've been talking about this all year, and I've been talking about this in teachings for many, many, many years, that that balance is being thrown off, of course, and we're seeing super storms and the massive fires and flooding and that this is because we are out of balance with ourselves and we are out of balance with the earth and the seasons and the cycles. And by out of balance means that we are separate from, we are not um, connected as uh, indigenous peoples and the ancient peoples have been very much aware and watching the signs and the movement of the heavens and the plants and everything, the animals, the worms, everything that goes on and living in accord with that. And that doesn't mean that we have to throw away our technology and our luxuries, but it does mean that we must adjust them to include and be in relationship to the earth and all that is around us. For as I said at the start, there is really no difference. We are all made of the same material. We, are, we all come from the same source. We are very unique expressions of, just like no two blades of grass are the same, no two snowflakes are the same, no two humans are alike, but we come from the same material and therefore 
must recognize, acknowledge, and feel that divinity within and within the other and everything around us. So, that's a lot of information, yes. But probably for those who are listening or will be listening in the future, you know this on a deep level. So it's not as if your brain has to compute everything and make sense of it and put it together. But your system, your inner being, your inner knowing resonates or feels some remembrance of what I'm saying. And with that, I would invite each of you to just find your sits bones and really sit on the chair or couch or floor that you find yourself at this moment. And when you find those sits bones, those of you who do yoga are aware of them, but they're the bones right in the very center of each buttocks cheek. And when you're seated firmly on those sits bones, then you are able to allow your shoulder blades to just kind of slide down and a little bit together. And that opens your chest giving you more space to breathe and allowing your heart to be more present and very much in connection with yourself. Very much more able to feel yourself. For when you do a practice and it is only through your mind or even higher mind, it is still not the breadth and depth of you. That takes you to a very wide bandwidth of um, frequencies, but it does not allow for the full spectrum of you. And that's what we're talking about today with color, the full spectrum of color, that which can be seen and that which can only be felt. So I always invite everyone to bring the attention, bring your sensation to your inner world, for that will allow you in your vessel, in your vehicle, to come down and in and then out to your inner universe, which includes this universe and all that your soul has experienced and with the wisdom of your wider self can give you the opportunity to actually travel or shape shift into the exact right location within your inner universe for you at this point in time. And you need not know where that is. You need not give it a label or a name, but it will allow for the exact right frequency of energetics to feed, enliven, uh, renew, regenerate, remind your system of who you are. Enabling you to sit in that knowing within your physical experience here on this planet. So I always like to invite everyone to either say to themselves or out loud, 
I am asking and I am allowing my body. I am asking and I am allowing my energy field. I am asking and I am allowing my wider self. I am asking and I am allowing all of my guides, teachers, masters, angels, helpers, to assist me in dropping down and within me. <clears throat> down and within my inner verse. And the wonderful thing is that you need not effort. As a matter of fact, you cannot work to do so. That's where the allowing comes in. Your wider self, your energy field know exactly how to do this. Have done for countless times. You're going down and inside your inner world, your inner knowing, your internal soul's experience. And right now, the container within has been created, configured for the utmost safety and security so that you are able to truly let go of the need to work or effort and allow trusting your own internal compass, your wider self, your energy field to lead you, guide you, Take you down and within. Down and within. You may experience the edges of you becoming somewhat diffuse. You may even experience yourself becoming somewhat sleepy or in that wonderful in-between state. For you are both physical, and non-physical. And the more you allow your energy field, your wider self to do the work, <clears throat> the more you will experience and sensate rather than visualize or imagine we are letting those go by the wayside 
no imagining, no visioning necessary. As a matter of fact, your third eye can take a seat in the back, no longer needing to have the steering wheel. For this is a deeper and wider knowing that enables you to feel what is occurring, not merely see. And again, some people may just take a little nap and that's quite all right. Others may feel movement or stirrings or tingling inside. All fabulous, unique to you in any given moment, many people will not feel anything in particular. All is good for each of you are an extremely knowledgeable and experienced soul, knowing exactly what's right for you in this moment. If you begin to fall back into imagining or seeing, simply sensate your body, and your internal body. Once again, I'm going to invite in the universal energetic of color to strengthen. And it is being transmitted to and through each of your experience. and the exact right frequency within that vast spectrum is being transmitted to and in your system in the exact right way, in the exact right combination For the opening and blossoming Now I'm really feeling 
Maleficent, Animal Teacher Skunk. This beautiful black and white markings. The many ways in which it is here to aid humans, not only spiritually and energetically, but in doing its job in maintaining the circle of life. eating the insects and little varmints, little critters to maintain the balance while energetically and spiritually gifting us with the ability to stand calmly in our ground of what is right and just for ourselves and how we desire this world to be. the contrast of black and white and the further contrast of fire and water that we see or have seen on the continent of Australia this year, a little over a year. And the powerful contrast of the volcano this hot molten lava in a country of ice and snow known as the country of fire and ice. A 
going to go one level deeper in these energetics. Nothing you need do, nothing you need know, no work, no effort on your part whatsoever. The transmissions are coming through very strongly, very clearly, and your wider self and your energy field know exactly how to lead you to a slightly deeper place to receive Drink in, absorb, what is just right for you. Enabling, healing, up-leveling, expanding, deepening. From your own being and each are having an extremely individualized and personally tailored journey another minute or so of this beautiful combination of universal energetics land experiences animal and plant wisdom benefit you on whatever level and in whatever area of your being, human or soul. That you are calling for at this point in time
this particular planet. And I can feel the consolidating of those energetics beginning. Again, nothing you need do. Simply allow for it to be done for you. Letting your system incorporate, meaning bringing into the corporeal your body. <clears throat> physical body to accommodate more of your energetic and spiritual being. Simply riding, following, sensating that process without letting your brain lead. A very gentle, organic process of moving from a somewhat less physical experience to a more physical experience yet with of received and taken in to continue to benefit you, teach you, allow you to be ever more aware of, ever more in touch with, ever more integrating your wider soul self into your human self. And as always, I encourage you to step outside, put your feet on the land as we're getting warmer here on the East Coast. That can be more easily done in your bare feet. And as always, I will see you here on Fridays. And please reach out to me if you'd like a 
deeper, wider, maybe more tailored to you experience of um, an energetic practice, or if you would like to get to know those impediments or mm, barriers to you knowing, being in touch with, having awareness and compassion and loving yourself in private sessions and those of you who utilize the Young Living Essential Oils I always am here for individual reads of what at any given moment the oils are saying to you or which oils would benefit you so please get in touch with me <clears throat> here on Facebook or on my website you'll find my phone number and as always it is with the deepest of gratitude honor and love for your presence here on the planet until next time be well in all